Hi friends, welcome to this special video on astrology as a path to empowerment. My name is Candace with Intuitive Visions. Thank you so much for being here. So in this video, I'm going to be talking about how astrology, uh, the knowledge of astrology, learning about astrology, and particularly learning about your own personal birth natal chart, how that can be a path to empowerment, to uh, alignment, and to creating a life that feels authentic and inspiring and fulfilling to you okay and so before i start that i want to just first say a quick shout out and thank you to miss nadia for allowing me again another opportunity to share my passion and my love around astrology so first time around i did a video on the 12th house which you can find i'm sure linked down below if you would like to check that out but for this time i'm going to be talking about again like i said using astrology as a form of empowerment as a path to self-discovery and as a path to creating and manifesting a life that feels authentic and aligned with you on a deeply spiritual level okay so i first got started with astrology at a very young age before i even really could conceptualize what astrology could do for me or the relationship that i was about to build with it i just had this very general like the strong curiosity to know more about myself and it was very natural i don't really remember why i had that curiosity but i remember you know checking out books reading um, this is when the internet was first started uh, reading about what aries meant as i am a heavy Aries uh, dominant person. And so I was just fascinated by how much information and how much validation and how I felt so seen from um, this, this magic, from this system that I had stumbled upon and yet speak spoke so deeply to me on a level of soul. And so um, I, like I said, I started astrology, started reading it, and then through the natural progression of life, you know, high school, middle school, um, I did get separated from it. But um, as once I graduated high school, I got reconnected with astrology. And that's actually when I found Nadia here. And I just started, like, I was ravenous. I just started uh, diving as deeply as I could, um, checked out some schools, checked out some further studies, worked with some mentors. And in that process, I found one of the most beautiful experiences I've ever had. And the first experience that I had had, studying astrology and building the relationship with astrology helped me to come to a place of acceptance of myself, really. Because at that time, as I was starting to dive deeper into astrology, I was um, in a strong resistance to what my life was and to how I was being. And so as I learned more about my placements, the aspects in my chart, as I got more readings and became more knowledgeable in my just own astrological knowledge, it became clear to me that although everything is, I personally believe, happening as it should, and everything is happening in divine order, that I had a choice. I had a choice on how I wished to express my chart, how I wanted to uh, channel these energies into my everyday life. And so when I realized that I had that choice to decide if I was going to express the more higher qualities, and I use that word very loosely here, or if I was going to continue to um, learn lessons and continue to learn things about myself until I found a way to work with my own energy. And so it has been a source of healing for me, a source of transformation, a source of inspiration as well and a source of empowerment because when I learned to accept all parts of myself and it was a process it didn't happen like I looked at my chart and I started understanding and there I was you know just accepting and loving all of me but it was a slow process it first took you know deconstructing the person that I thought I was right so before my Saturn return I was heavily um, living in my own conditioning and my programming and 
as my Saturn return uh, approached and uh, simultaneously I was having Saturn uh, transiting over my ascendant, um, I became more enlightened to the ways of my own being and what it was trying to tell me. Okay, And so I started looking more closely at the planets because I really wanted to figure out what was going on. Like I was just in a very frustrated place. Um, I felt like I kept taking two steps forward to just take excuse me, take one step forward to take two steps back. And so I felt like I was in a cycle where, that I couldn't get out of. And not because I felt like I was being punished or anything, because it just was a matter of not knowing, ignorance. And so that's when I really started diving deep into astrology and figuring out how the planets were actually serving me. And when I learned um, how those planets were manifesting through a particular sign and through a particular aspect, it gave me power. It gave me choice. And it gave me the ability to pause and not be bound or subjected to the more unconscious um manifestations of those planets. So I started right in order, right? I started with the sun. Western astrology is very much focused on sun, sun sign astrology. And so I focused there. So what does the sun mean? It means how we shine, how we radiate our vitality, how we self express, how we self love, which is for me and how we, um, it's our essence. Right. So I feel like the sun is something that you step into more as you progress through your life. You discover more of your light. You discover more of how to shine and radiate your life so that it is a source of nourishment and warmth as opposed to something that can burn. Um, and be painful. And so the sun energy for me is a source of confidence and it is a source of empowerment. It's one source of empowerment. And so when I started studying, you know, like I said, the sign and the aspects, it showed me that the sun is actually really important. It is the core of who I am. Everything revolves around that. And the sun is my identity, my ego, right? And in this world, we need to have a sense of identity because we need to know what we stand for. We need to have some clear, clear boundaries. Um, we need to decide, you know, who we want to be, how we want to portray ourselves, how we want to show up in the world. And so I started looking at that more deeply because I was living very disconnected from my own vitality, power, and confidence. And so once I started studying that, I was like, okay, let me invite more of this sun energy into my life and allow it to radiate from within. And so, yes, I personally believe that the sun is, like I said, what you further grow into as your journey progresses. Um, and it is important, but we're emotional beings, right? And so this is where the moon sign comes in. Everything that we do experience is experienced on a level of emotion and heart. Um, we are moved by emotions. We are, we are feeling beings as much as we want to believe that we're rational beings are very much more so connected to a very instinctual and, um, emotional part of ourselves. And so the moon was so important because I needed to know what I needed to feel secure, to feel safe, to feel nurtured. Because at that time I was complete opposite of that. I was expressing um, or was attaining my needs in ways that were harmful to me. And so once I really zoned in, okay, this is what I need to feel good. This is what I need to feel safe. This is how I relate to my emotions. This is how my emotions can color my perspective and my experience. It was a source of empowerment because it gave me an opportunity opportunity to emotionally transform. It gave me an opportunity to shift my pattern and my up until that point way of emoting and give me the choice to decide to do differently. And again, it wasn't always easy because we have patterns and we have um, habits that are really ingrained within us that aren't so easy to shift, right? They can be very stubborn. But again, the more I got in tune with what those actual needs are, those emotional needs, which are so important for us as humans to feel fulfilled and to feel good in our body, secure and safe, um, that was like paramount for me. That was a game changer. And also it showed me or helped me um, build a better relationship with my own feminine energy. Okay. As an Aries, there's a lot of masculine energy. And so um, getting in touch with what my own feminine energy represented allowed me to tap in and to seek those things within myself. And so 
Right. But beyond our emotions, we are, we still do live in our head quite a bit. Okay. This is how we navigate the world through the stories, through the interpretations and through the perceptions that we see out there. And so this was a, another big piece for me too. Um, because it was at this point when I started studying Mercury that I realized that again, I have choice. And so either I can choose to communicate with myself in a way that is, um, empowering or helpful or nurturing or kind or compassionate or supportive or i could speak to my way speaks to myself in a way that cuts myself down that is um, negative that is demeaning that is overbearing okay and up until that point i didn't realize i had a choice i felt more so like a slave to my own mind and figuring out how i not only thought and perceived and took the world in, but how I thought and perceived of myself was a total game changer. Okay. Because again, it was very unconscious. And so astrology has been an awakening for me. And again, as I moved through the planets, I was awakened more and more into my own power, <laughs> to uh, my own abilities and to who I was again, created to be the blueprint that I came into this life and how to navigate it to my highest and fullest potential. And so it started with the, it's, it moved into the mind and start with the mind started with the sun. But like I said, it moved into the mind and that's really where I started getting really into like subconscious, um, subconscious programming, learning how to shift your mindset, working on mindset. And that also too was a challenge because I have Mercury in Pisces. It's, you know, hard for me sometimes to really express myself in the ways that, um, I really desire to, or the ways that I really feel because there is this emotional nature that comes through, um, that kind of waters down the, uh, mental processes that I have. But I learned that I can work intuitively, that the way that I think is different and unique. And when I learned to appreciate and see the value in the way that I think and the way that I communicate, I could shift it more towards a communication style that was kinder, more generous and more accepting. Okay. And so then I wanted to know more about empowerment. Okay. And so I was like, well, Mars, what, what planet represents power and empowerment more than Mars? And for me, um, I'm an Aries rising. So Mars is my chart ruler. And so this is where, uh, things got really real. And I was like, because I had heard, you know, growing up that I was selfish, that I only thought about myself, that, um, I was like a crybaby, you know, or that I like was super competitive. And I always took it like when people would say it to me, I took it as like a negative thing because there was this tone that did indicate that it was negative or bad. And so there was a lot of shame around my own power. I was very fearful about expressing myself in a, in a strong way. My independence at that time, um, was lacking. I was very much more codependent. And so learning about my own, not my own, but the, the planet that ruled my chart not only showed me that it's okay to be fiery and independent and strong and feisty as a woman, but that it was also meant for me to do that. It was part of my path and part of my learning to step into that role, to step into this uh, energy that is more assertive and confident and strong-willed and pioneering. Um, and that was so reassuring to me because it showed me the opposite. Okay. It showed me the positive qualities of Mars. It showed me that my power is isn't something that I have to hide and it isn't something that I have to uh, minimize for other people to feel good. And so that source of empowerment that I received from learning about Mars gave me the energy and the drive to further dive deeper into astrology because it just kept speaking to me. It kept pulling me and I kept discovering more about myself. And I started putting the pieces together and things just started to make sense. Right. And so naturally as all humans do um we think okay well i know so much about me let's start looking at my relationships let's start looking at uh love and my values and so i started you know uh, looking into venus and before this time it was i had not really heard of the concept of values i mean i heard of it but i never truly understood what it meant um if you were to ask me what values i live by at that time i would think you're speaking a foreign language. And so that was also really important for me too, because these things matter. These are the things that I was choosing to build 
my life upon, whether I realized it or not, and whether I was expressing it in a way that was beneficial for me or, or not. And it also really helped me to see what it is that I desired and, um, yes, desired and attracted in my relationships and ultimately what I wanted in a partner, right? And so at this point in time, once it's like once the focus shifted off to me and started shifting towards, towards other people, I started realizing, okay, astrology is not just only for self discovery. Astrology can help me align with the things that I need. Maybe not the things that I want, but the things that I need, the things that will truly fulfill me at a very deep soul level, right? I started thinking like I can use astrology as a way to create my life by using or playing upon my strength and working to develop what I considered my weaknesses. I could change my relationship to money and to abundance and to just, again, my own feminine nature, my own sensual nature, my own femininity, my own um, ability to feel uh, good within my body as opposed to shaming it, right? Uh, Venus represents both Libra and Taurus. And so there was both qualities of that, looking at relationships, but also looking at my own sense of self-worth and where it is that, you know, my Venus had been afflicted um, or where in, you know, my second house that um, I was experiencing challenges around self-worth and self-value. And that, like... <laughs> That and alone just made so much sense. I know I keep saying everything made like that was the moment, but it really was because it was a progression of how each time I dedicated to looking at a planet and to studying it, it more in relationship to how it um, manifested in my own life personally, it was a, it was like my mind was blown. It was a mind blower every single time. It was, it was an adventure, honestly. Um, the path of self discovery and the way that astrology helped me navigate that path was just, um, doing something so magical that I've never experienced before. So, once I got done with the personal planets, I'm like, okay, well, there's other planets too. And I'm sure these affect me in some way or another. So let's jump into there. And so I moved into Jupiter, right? Mainly our beliefs, our optimism, um, how we view the world, um, the culture that we come from, our optimism, our faith, our, our blessings, our abundance, our luck. And when I learned that, it helped me to realize that I'm not alone, right? And that, yes, the world can be hard and yes, the world can have some very cruel things that happen to it, but I do have a benefic and benevolent force working in my life, working in my favor. And when I least expect it, by faith alone, blessings find me. And when I have that strong faith, that ability to see beyond my current circumstances, then anything is possible. And that I was living my life in a very limited way at that time. I didn't believe in possibilities. I didn't believe that um, I could change my worldview. I thought, you know, this is just the way I am and there's nothing I can do about it. But Jupiter helped to expand expand my worldview um, through connecting with all different types of people from all different types of cultures. And so I learned not only about myself, but how other people live their life too. And Jupiter also helped me to, like I said, the faith was also a really big part of it because I didn't have a sense of faith at that time. I didn't have a belief system. And so Jupiter um, gave me the gift of following the system of belief that astrology holds. And I know that there's many different uh, storylines and perspectives and beliefs that people hold around astrology. But for me, it gave me the structure I needed. It gave me something to follow. It was a map that I had to figure out and me just being naturally curious, um, I was ready to dive in. I was ready to receive the blessings, the blessings that astrology was up until that point unknowingly giving me and now knowingly choosing to access them more. And so what is life without lessons, right? <laughs> this is where Saturn comes in because no matter what happened in life, there was always a problem. There was always something that felt like in some area of life where I felt limited, where I felt delayed, where I felt resistance, where I felt pushback. And I was like, what is that about? And so I started learning about Saturn and I realized that Saturn wasn't there to punish me, wasn't there to make my life miserable, but instead was there to help me grow, to help me mature, to become more wiser and to be more accepting of reality, to not necessarily um, put all my um, 
energy into the ideal, but to see that reality can be just as beautiful, that reality is also spiritual, you know, however you want to define that. And also that um, Saturn is about self-respect. And so when you are in integrity, when you're committed to your growth, when you're committed to your journey and to your evolution, then Saturn rewards you. And when you do the hard work, it is worth it. Okay. And what I mean, when you do the hard work, whatever that hard work is for you, whatever is uh, an alignment for your own Saturn placement. Um, and for me, there was, yeah, definitely a lot of tough lessons that I felt like I was cursed that I just didn't know. Um, things were out to get me, but I realized, okay, no, it's not to get me. It's again, a choice. Here's that moment of empowerment. I can choose to look at this or perceive this in a way as poor me play the victim, or I can step up. I can rise to the occasion. I can become that much more diligent, that more, that much more tenacious about getting the lessons um, and extracting the wisdom from those lessons that life was always continuously giving me no matter what area of life it was showing up in and so yes it felt um, very cold and very unemotional right like without any kind of sympathy but it also made me much more resilient my god much more resilient and much more appreciative of the material world that I didn't need to escape into some dream land because um, heaven can be right here, right now on earth, right? You can, they say that you can make heaven uh, on earth or you can make it hell. And again, it was a choice. What was I going to do? Was I going to take all these painful experiences that yes, beat me down, but ultimately made me wiser and stronger? Or was I going to stay down, play the victim and not take responsibility for my life? So I then started naturally, I had an interest in spirituality and esotericism and all things metaphysical. So I started learning about the outer planets. Okay. And so I started learning about Pluto and how Pluto uh, represents that transformation in our lives, that sense of going down to the deepest recesses of our own psyche and of our own spirit and contending with our demons, right? And making them allies, right? Um, change is never easy, especially for humans. And so it helped me to understand the natural cycle of life, which is death and rebirth. And although that seems simplistic when we say it, in practicality, it's a lot difficult. We have a difficult time as humans um, letting go, truly letting go, truly allowing ourselves to change and evolve because it ultimately requires a death of the person that we've known ourselves to be at that point in time. And that's what it felt like. It felt like Pluto was doing this kind of constant death and rebirth in my life. And that was exhausting. It was draining, emotionally draining for me, but also psychologically draining. But when I saw what uh, Pluto was trying to do personally in my chart to help me evolve, to remove any sense of superficiality and to get to the core of something, Pluto was showing me that there is vulnerability and strength, that there is safety in trusting um, in whatever, another person that you love or in, you know, the universe or God, but it was ultimately showing me my relationship to intimacy and my relationship to a process of regeneration and of allowing myself to accept, forgive, and be at peace with my shadow self, to not fight so much against myself or to fight against um, a part of myself that I didn't see any value in or that I didn't feel had any place to be there. Um, this place that Pluto represented was a deep, deep reservoir of treasure, but I had been unwilling to go there. And when I decided to go there, I, I did not know what I was going to expect, but... <laughs> Now I can say that when I look back on it, it's like, wow, like had I not known that Pluto was about transformation and knowing, you know, how Pluto was going to be affecting my chart and just affecting me and my personal life, then this could have been a really painful experience. This could have felt as if like I was going crazy or as if like, you know, I wasn't going to make it. It could get to some very dark places. And when I knew that I was going to visit those dark places and where those dark places would show up in my life, it allowed me to have more courage and more power to face those demons and those uh, dragons that ultimately I was being asked to slay. And so Uranus comes in, Uranus was transiting my uh, ascendant, right? It was like going uh, back and forth over my, um, back into my 12th and over in my sun and into my first. And so things were changing quickly. Like 
I'm telling you, it's like I was in alignment with the energies of the planet. And so um, things just started changing like out of nowhere, like things that I were, was interested in just no longer resonated. I was doing one thing one day and the next day I was doing another and I, it was very chaotic. It felt very unstable during that time. And I was always very fearful. I was, uh, my nervous system was totally shot. I was stressed all the time because I felt as if like I never knew when the next, you know, when the shoe was going to drop. I always felt like I needed to be on guard. But I realized that Uranus again wasn't, um, torturing me. It was intending to set me free. It was intending to liberate me and remove anything from me that was not a true and authentic representation, again, of who I was created to be. And also that if I wanted to experience true freedom. If I wanted to know what it felt to be liberated from the past and to no longer hold on to stories or to um, experiences that were still harming me. Okay. And so Urana said, (laughs) enough with that. We are going to set you free from this, but it's going to be work, right? There's going to be that tower moment. There's going to be that chaos so that you can now rebuild in a way that is more in alignment with you, that is grounded, that is uh, upon a foundation that you decide upon, not that has been given to you. And so at the, like I said, I was really into um, spirituality. And so I started looking at Neptune. And how does Neptune play in my life? Where is it that I want to view reality better than it is? Where is it that I want to hold my illusions and deceive myself into thinking um, something else as a way to avoid, you know, my pain or my anger or my frustration? And Neptune represents that dissolving energy, right? Wherever it goes, it has this tendency to kind of just make things into putty. And it really represented for for me, at least in my chart, this um, act of surrender, this act of non-doing, learning how to be, which was the most difficult part as someone who has, again, very strong and dominant Aries energy. And so Neptune showed me that while everything can be you can you can be on the go all the time and yang energy is so important there is always a contrast and you know what goes up must come down and so when we're doing 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 we need to find that time for rest and while we are living within our mind so much we need to tap into our heart or tap into our intuition and when the world gets too tough and we need to find an escape, that's okay too, right? But it also sh- showed me my source of creativity. It showed me my connection to the divine. It was something that I had been seeking for so long that I didn't realize I wanted, right? I had tried religion. I had tried atheism. I tried different types of religion, um, different branches of religion. And it wasn't until I really again discovered, not discovered astrology, but got really back into it and started studying it again after some years that I realized that spirituality is what I define it as. It is my personal connection to the divine. It's my personal connection to spirit and how I choose to uh, invite that energy into my life and how I choose to relate to it is something I get to create on my own. And there's no right or wrong way. It's all encompassing. Everything can be considered spiritual. And so I didn't find the need where I realized that I didn't have the, I didn't need to escape. Of course, everything was a process, you know, unraveling further what what was kind of blowing my mind at this time. But that, like I said, I didn't need to escape. That instead, I could find a way to connect to that energy in ways that didn't, you know, alter my mind, that um, didn't take away from my energy, but that I could just connect. I could intend to feel that energy and that energy would be there. And so, like I said, this uh, astrology journey has been a source of empowerment, has been a source of healing, has been a source of coming to terms and acceptance with myself, with my life, and honestly, the world at large. Because as you learn about astrology, not only you learn about yourself, but you start to learn about other people and how they behave and, you know, what experiences and conditioning they've had to make them the person that they are. You learn about their strengths and their areas of development and you have a choice. You can have a choice of how you're going to wish to proceed with them and interact with them, which will create a situation where either they're going to express their um, more positive qualities or their more negative qualities. And 
as I started to share with people, I saw that not only for myself was it a source of empowerment, but it was for other people because I started reading charts and I started teaching astrology. And when people started to resonate and to um, relate to the information that I was sharing with them, either through the readings or through the classes, the sense of relief, <laughs> really, the sense of relief and the sept and the um, level of acceptance that my clients received was unmatched. It was truly a spiritual experience to share those moments with clients and to give them something that helped them to understand that moment in time that they were in or just help them understand their past, their present, their future, you know, what they came here to do, um, why they have issues around love, money or work and, um, it was very reassuring and very comforting to know that I was able to share something that impacted me so powerfully with other people and for them to have that same effect. But they also had to choose to be open to that. I didn't try to force anyone to it or try to change anyone's beliefs, but I truly believe that um, I was brought with people who were ready for that process, who were ready to step into their empowerment and to their confidence and to um, a more knowledgeable place on themselves and their path. And ever since then, it's been, you know, it's been an amazing journey. And it continues still because astrology is something that you can always, always, always learn about. There's so many layers. It can get, it is complex. Um, and there's so many nuances and details that you can pay attention to. So many systems of astrology, so many beautiful ways to interpret, so many different ways to relate to it. And that's why I feel like it's such a powerful and personal journey of healing and empowerment. So my friends, thank you so much for tuning into this video. Um, please share your thoughts down below, share what you liked about it, share how astrology has impacted your life um, and how you think it can help you in your life. Because again, when you know who you are, you have that sense of self-knowledge, you can make choices, you can align yourself with relationships, with people, friendships, jobs, experiences, places, that resonate with your own being, that bring out and allow you to develop your most highest potential. So beyond just a spiritual and healing tool, it is also a practical tool um, when used correctly. So like I said, friends, thank you so much for tuning in. Um, I'll leave all my information down below if you wish to connect with me on social media um, or if you'd like to work with me, I'll leave all my information down below. But I hope you all are staying safe, staying well during these times and I'm sending all my love. Take care.